High voltage lines crisscrossing thousands of miles across the country. They are arteries flowing electricity to every corner of the nation. But many people despise them. Trees are cut down to make way for the mammoth towers and large tracts of land are taken up. And energy companies are not too fond of them either because they are a nightmare to permit. They are called eyesores, land intensive and necessary. But a Canadian company says it has found a way around it. What we're doing is we're, we're interconnecting, you know, clean generation with uh, the most congested markets in the U.S. So, you know, we're very excited about this project. Transmission Developers Incorporated is planning to bring hydro and wind power from Quebec to New York City by burying a high voltage cable in the bed of the Hudson River. It's called the Champlain Hudson Power Express. It's in the permitting stages and if approved, it will carry 2,000 megawatts to New York City and Connecticut. The plan is for the $3.8 billion project to start in Lake Champlain, then into the Hudson River. It will go ashore in Albany for a 75 mile stretch, then back into the waters of the Hudson until it reaches just north of the Big Apple. The direct current cable will then be fed into a conversion station in Yonkers and converted to AC power. Now putting a high voltage cable underwater has been done before. Take the Neptune cable for example. It originates in New Jersey, goes under the Atlantic Ocean and ends up here in Hicksville, New York, providing nearly a quarter of Long Island's electricity needs. The Neptune high voltage cable took less than four years to complete. Most above ground high voltage lines can take up to 18 years to build across state lines. Actually, it turns out that burying the cable under the sea in the Atlantic Ocean was far cheaper than it would have been to try to site and permit and build the cable above ground. It was done at a fraction of the cost because the Long Island Power Authority had to deal with less red tape. Above ground lines would have to gain approval from every city, county and state they traveled through. And quite often utilities are met with great opposition to high voltage towers in residential neighborhoods. Why don't we see this more often when it comes to high voltage lines? Uh, I think the difficulty is when, when building uh, undersea cables, uh, there, there have to be landing points. And then there has to be investment where the facility lands to move the power out to customers. When you add in the cost of a conversion station, direct current cables can cost more than three times as much as alternating current. But it's a price TDI says it's willing to pay. You know, one of the issues with AC transmission today is although it's a great technology, if you can't site it because communities don't want to have it in their backyard, DC is a very viable solution. The Neptune Cable's current energy source isn't renewable. It's a mixed cycle natural gas plant in New Jersey. But it allows Long Island to use less of its old inefficient oil power plants, saving on carbon emissions and saving the ratepayers of Long Island money. And I think that it's a technology whose time has come. I think we'll see much uh, greater activity and, and more interest in siting underground cables as we try to connect regions of the country to move power more freely. So I think we're seeing the dawn of a new era here where we'll see many more projects like this proposed. This isn't the first time a high voltage cable was proposed to bring energy down from Canada using the Hudson. In the early 1990s, the Empire Cable Project ran into financing problems and was met with stiff opposition from environmentalists. But this time around, with the need for green energy, some of those same environmentalists are taking a wait-and-see approach. Environmentalists were worried about the cable disturbing one area of the riverbed near Albany. Industrial chemicals were dumped there for decades, and that's why TDI is bringing the cable ashore for a 75-mile detour around Albany. Experts say this idea isn't a silver bullet. The energy from renewables in the United States needs to flow east and west, where most U.S. rivers flow north and south. As a broad generalization, that underground transmission or subsea transmission is always something of a niche application. It's always uh, something where you can't do it any other way or where there is a very clear and beneficial advantage to going through a waterway to do so. TDI says if approved, they will begin construction of the Champlain Hudson Power Express in the fall of next year. Lee Patrick Sullivan, 
Clean Skies News.